As many of y'all have heard or at least seen by now that Wizards of the Coast will be releasing their upcoming Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-earth set from Magic the Gathering in which multiple characters are race swapped. Now initially when I heard this I just put it aside and I just said you know what it's it's just another way that they're going to try and make people angry it's just trying to get more outrage on the internet it's it's disingenuous it's inauthentic and all those things are true but I wasn't initially going to do a video on it because I really thought nothing of it and I just kind of scoffed at it and relegated it to nothing more than just hey let's get some rage clicks let's get some hate baiting or whatever you want to call it and get the internet upset, which it obviously did, and people are already making videos and posts about it. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit more about those disingenuous arguments and how harmful they can be a lot of the times, and just how like selfish they can seem at times. And I don't want to come across as not being empathetic towards diversity, inclusion, representation, because of course those things in the, at their core and essence are good, but a lot of these arguments come across as very disingenuous when you actually look at them and where they're coming from and who is saying a lot of this. So let's go ahead and get started. So yesterday I posted this on my Twitter account and I basically had this conversation that many of you have heard before saying when they say diversity is the most important thing ever, seeing people of color represented in these stories will literally save lives. But then when I come into the equation and I ask, well, why did you race swap Aragorn particularly? Because he's not black. He was never written to be black. And then they come back with, ha ha, oh my God, why do you care so much? His race doesn't even matter. Cry harder, chud loser. Another one of the arguments that you will most likely hear is, I've always loved Lord of the Rings, but now I can finally see myself. And to that, I respond with, you never loved Lord of the Rings to begin with. You are a shallow, selfish person who only sees superficial surface level qualities. You never understood the story of the characters. You are just trying to virtue signal. You are a tourist. And listen, we all know that Tolkien based the Lord of the Rings and his writings off of Norse and Finnish mythology. Another one of his inspirations being the House of Wolflings by William Morris that tells the story of an ancient Germanic tribe fending off and fighting against Roman legionnaires or the Roman Empire. All of these influences for Tolkien were predominantly white cultures. And that's okay, that's, that's fine, that's not a bad thing. There are things that are not going to represent everyone in the world and that's fine. Not everyone needs to be able to see their specific skin color or skin tone or hairstyle within a comic book or story or movie or book. There are plenty of characters that I love and that I know that I've resonated with that I look absolutely nothing like. Take Silver Surfer for example. I did a video about him just a few days ago on my channel. Silver Surfer may be one of the characters I resonate with most. Do I have silver skin? Am I from the planet Zen La? Am I the guardian of the spaceways? No, absolutely not. But I can still resonate with the character and his moralistic traits, his virtues. That's what I resonate with. And a lot of people will say that I'm a minority, so I can't resonate with white characters. I'm a white guy, and yet I have resonated plenty with black characters. So are you telling me that I can't see myself in Al Simmons Spawn, or that I can't see myself with Sam Wilson Falcon, or that I can't see myself within Blade or Black Panther, or God willing, I can't see myself in John Stewart Green Lantern, who is my one of my favorite favorite Green Lanterns to date. You telling me that I can't resonate with any one of those characters, even though I was reading them at a young age and I love those comic books and I love those movies, are you telling me that I can't enjoy that because I'm white? Are you that superficial that that's the only thing that you can see? You also get disingenuous arguments like this one. As much as I love Lord of the Rings, the fandom has some of the most toxic, racist, anti-black gatekeepers in any fandom outside Star Wars. They can fucking cope. Now this is a response merely to someone on Twitter 
asking and confirming that the scripture, that the text written by Tolkien himself as a description for Aragorn from book one, chapter nine, it looks like, is true or false. Lean, dark, tall, with a shaggy head of dark hair flecked with gray, and in a pale, stern face, a pair of keen gray eyes. So are you telling me that Tolkien's words are anti-black and racist? And that Tolkien is the worst fandom instead of Star Wars? Like, because all this guy is doing is quoting Tolkien. And yet you're saying, oh, well, the fandom has some of the most toxic, anti-black, racist, hateful chuds, blah, blah. No, no, no. He just literally posted Tolkien back to you. He posted the book back to you. How? How is that in any way racist, toxic, homophobic, misogynist, it's, it's none of, it's zero of those. It is literally zero of those. It is posting a quote from the book. It would be like if someone just literally took a picture of the page of the book and someone said, that's racist. You are delusional. This is absolutely ridiculous. The, the extent to which these conversations have gone out of hand and out of control and straw man arguments and gaslighting has occurred within these types of, uh, you know, nerd culture arguments is fucking pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. And it's because of these responses that think that just because something exists, it is inherently racist or sexist or bigoted and that the fans replicate that in some way. No, this guy, specifically the one who is responding with Tolkien's quote, he is a purist. He loves the hobby because he doesn't want to change it. He wants it to be pure in its form, what it was written to be about. He wants it as what Tolkien intended it for it to be, which was a mythology for England. I hate the disingenuous arguments that are going on. Um, I don't like this whole fan baiting notion. Um, and I just, I hope that this shit stops real quick um, or that at some point someone figures out that it's not going to make them any more money. It's not going to be the virtue signal that they think it is. It's not going to bring in new fans. There's no modern audience. There's no fake modern audience out there that exists somewhere. Um, th these things just don't exist. And I'm, I'm hoping that after a while when the pendulum swings back and we can get back to actually having discourse with people that this stuff will be that, that it will fall by the wayside and we'll look back on it being like man that was a weird time right like that was a weird time in history and you know glad that's over but until then like this stuff is going to continue on it, it's it's going to be nonsensical and it is just um, going to continue. Um, and it's only going to get worse before it gets better, unfortunately. But uh, what do you guys think with the most recent news of these characters being race swapped for the Magic the Gathering game? I think it's really pathetic. I think it's a pathetic way of trying to get uh, rage clicks. I think it's a pathetic way of trying to virtue signal. And I think it's a pathetic way to try and get people's sympathy. Uh, it's very disingenuous as well, like I've said previously. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching.